It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. Sarah, we got three new bottles on the table. What do we have? We have the Heaven Hill Grain to Glass series. Three new expressions from Heaven Hill. Three new mash bills. What a treat. Yeah, yeah. So the. I mean, I am a Heaven Hill girly. Right. I do. Do yeah. love me some Heaven Hill. Same. Um, You're a Heaven Hill girl? Uh, yeah, 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 Dude. absolutely, that's what I said. So the story behind this is grain to glass, I mean, isn't all whiskey grain to glass? I mean, it starts with grains and it ends up in your glass. Yeah. All right, so for a little backstory, here's some info from the press release. The craft nature of this unique line of whiskey starts at the very beginning, the seed. The idea for the line began eight years ago as a brainchild of Heaven Hill executive chairman, Max Shapira. Mac's passion for quality and transparency in whiskey making led to a partnership with seat company Bex Hybrids, a fellow family-owned and led operation based in Indiana since 1937. Each year, our master distiller works with Bex Hybrids to hand-select a unique corn seed varietal that has specific attributes desirable for Heaven Hill's grain to glass, one of which is choosing seed which is best suited for growth in central Kentucky. The chosen corn varietal is then grown by Peterson Farms on one of the two sites in Nelson County, one of which is directly across the street from Heaven Hill's Bardstown facility. Peterson Farms, a multi-generational family farming company, has been entrusted to take the corn seed varietals and cultivate it into healthy grain that goes into the Heaven Hill grain to glass mash bills. So there you go. Okay, cool. I think what's interesting about these mash bills is that they're all higher in rye than your typical Heaven Hill mash bill. So the standard Heaven Hill bourbon mash bill at least is 78% corn, 10% rye, 12% malted barley. Mm -hmm. The bourbons in this are 52% corn, 35% rye, and 13% malted barley. So huh. just a touch higher malted barley, uh, but definitely a lot higher rye. We're going from 10% to 35%. I mean, that's a high rye. Yeah, and we're used to 35% in like, you know, the Four Roses world and, and some other places, but the malted barley is never as high. These are, uh, you know, you could take one percentage point of corn away from this and they would still legally be bourbon. But, uh, you know, you would call these barely legal bourbons, right? I guess that's yeah. true, yeah. And then also to consider one of these is a rye bourbon and the other one's a weeded bourbon. So mm -hmm. that 35% is wheat instead of rye in go. that one. And then they've, we've got a rye whiskey on the table here. Mm -hmm. They usually, you know, we see with like Pikesville. Uh, barely and, legal rye. Right. This one is 63% rye, 24% corn. 13% malted barley yeah. versus like we see that 51%, 51 that barely rye, legal. Right. Um, so we're going okay. up there too. So big fan of rye in a couple mm -hmm. of these bottles, but also up in the uh, wheat For as sure. well. And we're gonna do all three as a review. We're gonna go up in proof. The lowest proof on this one is the rye bourbon. It's 107 proof. So that's where we're gonna start. Let's clear off these others. So once again, this is 107 proof. We're looking at a mash bill of 35% rye, 52% corn, and 13% malted barley. You definitely get some of the spicier notes Me on too. the nose, but still with that earthiness from the malted barley. They're also all aged at the Cox Creek uh, warehouse location, which I got to go into one of those uh, warehouses that I've never been into before and taste a couple of these straight from the barrel. Mm. Um, Sarah, you were in Chicago winning an award. Oh no, <laughs> we can't do it all. I'll divide and conquer, right? I just wanted to, you know, say that you want to know. Thank you, I appreciate 40 that. Forty under forty. Forty under forty. All I had to do was be born before or after nineteen eighty four. <laughs> I guess good for me. The nose on this, I really love those little bit of spice, but earthy characteristics too. You know what weird note I'm getting on the nose is Fritos or corn chips. You kind of get that? A little, but not so much. I mean, I think with the lower percentage mm. of corn, I'm getting more of that rye and malted barley. I know, but it's like, it's like a, a spicy. A zesty chip. A, a zesty chip. I I'm, I'm getting Cool Ranch Doritos, Chad. I can see that too, uh, honestly, honestly. I mean, seriously. I'm joking, <laughs> but he's not. <laughs> All right, to your health. Wow, good mm. proof of that 107. It's bringing some heat. I mean, 35% This is the rye. lowest proof? This is the lowest. Ooh, yeah, that 35% rye and that 107 proof, a real yeah. zip. But only one of them is barrel proof and that'll be the rye. Okay. All right, uh, I wanted to go in for my second, but no. It's starting to creep its way down into the chest fills. It's really starting to spread out. That's nice. As I said, that 107 proof is really drinking its proof or higher, I would mm -hmm. say. I'm gonna go back for my second sip. Okay, we can do that. It's full of flavor. Lots. All those notes from the the pal or the nose that I said carry through to the palate. Lots of rice spice. Lots of rice spice. Yes, I love that, but not too spicy and not too minty or herbal or whatever. You know, some people equate no, rye no. with being very like medicinal or earthy. It has those characteristics, but not a lot. I would say it's more like 
a cinnamon red hot. I agree. It's more in the cinnamon baking spice mm -hmm. aspect of rye flavors, not so much the herbal medicinal things like that going on. Agreed. As it rolls into its finish and it's really settling mm -hmm. a nice little fireplace here in the chest, that cinnamon red hot is turning a little bit more into a pepper, mm -hmm. uh, dried pepper, black pepper, I guess, peppery. because also the, the oak, which for it being, you know, a little over six years, it's got a, a pretty decent amount of oak on the finish, but that's really where so. it comes in is on the finish. Agreed. The star of the palette is the rye spice. Right. Yeah. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're, we're labeling these so we don't get them mixed up. We're gonna leave it here and maybe we'll come back after we've had the other two on our palette. But Perhaps we wanna, revisit and, yeah, and tell you our favorite. Move on to the next one, which is Sarah. Uh, the weeded bourbon. All right, so we've got the weeded bourbon in front of us now. This one is 121 proof, Chad, so quite the jump from that 107. However, it's not barrel proof. So some <laughs> water has been added very intentionally. I'm thinking a little bit of water. A little. A little bit a little. of water. Yeah. Probably not much water. Yeah. Sometimes you have said before, it's like opening like an old chest, like a cedar chest or something. And I kind of get that on this one, but there's a lot, in it. a lot of sweetness on it too. Mm -hmm. It's very much, this one's got a nose like memories, you know? For sure, yeah. It's got that closet or chest type of cedar oak smell. It's very comforting. Makes me feel at ease. A lot of wood notes, yeah. Yeah, a lot of wood notes. Sweeter, sweet. yes, in comparison to the, the rye, but I wouldn't call it like... Sugary sweet. Sugary Confectionary, sweet. no. Yeah, it's just totally. delicate and sweet. All right. Let's see about this 121 proof. To your health again. Oh, that's delightful. Wow. <laughs> Did, mm, when I... Saw about the 35% rye in the bourbon mash bill. I thought for sure, okay, that's gonna be my favorite. Just yeah. knowing, you know, I like Four Roses high rye. I like their B recipes that have the 35% rye. I tend to just like Heaven Hills bur bourbon selection in general. But when it comes to this wheat, mm, wow, I think yeah. I like it better. Well, here's the thing. We went from 107 to 121. Yet but, I'm not feeling much difference in like finish and heat. Yeah, and yes, 107 with 35% rye and 121 with 35% wheat. They might read a little closer than they actually Yeah, yeah. and are. you know, we've said it a million times, but for those who don't know, uh, wheat is just a less dominant grain than rye, so it lets the sweetness of the corn show through. But wow. Okay. I mean, you get the heat from that 121 but it's a, mm. a gentle, slow building heat on the palate. There is a little sweetness, but again, with that heat, those wood notes, it's really balanced out. It's not confectionery. It's not super, it doesn't jut out in one direction. Like, yeah, it's not candied sweetness. It's not fruit sweetness necessarily. It's just like a really nice, again, like I know everybody's like brown sugar caramel, but yeah. it, it just is that central. Yeah, it's like the sweetness that you would get from sorghum or something like that. Mm -hmm. I would say honey, but there's not really a honey note in there. I guess like yeah. Like molasses Molasses, or yes, sorghum, molasses. And also it it has a good mouthfeel, so I it think also that's why I'm nice thinking of like, you know, molasses. Yeah, and I think that and like the wood notes definitely carry through to the finish, which is long. It really settles in. It warms you right up. Yeah, it's got sort of the same finish as the rye with that black pepper, but it's mm. not as forward. Yeah, it's more of a muted. More muted and, subtle. and more, not more oak, but you experience the oak because the pepper is, the black pepper's kind of quelled down a little bit. Yeah. So you're getting, yeah. Oh, I want to keep drinking this one, mm -hmm. but I will mm -hmm. put it to the mm -hmm. side for now. Because I do believe, Chad, we have something to talk about. Don't we have something to tell? We, you know what? We sure do. A second ago, when I was talking about these lenses that can save your whiskey from those pesky gnats in the summer, and also trap the news if you want to do that and do this whole thing. Um, you can do that. These are available at whiskeyambitions.com, which is our home on the internet. Things like the t-shirt, the rye or die, which are getting ready to go to the rye here in a second. That's why I wore it. Uh, the Glencairns we're drinking from are water glasses. In fact, all of our glassware, including our mini Glens, and we got that Glencairn uh, sample kit, uh, tasting kit, yeah. <laughs> tasting kit as well, which also has the lids that will save your bourbon. Uh, bottle cut candles, elemental elixir, cocktail syrup, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And we have recently had five different barrel picks on dock, on the uh, on deck, on the docket, whatever you want to say, on dock. to be released exclusively to our Patreon members. If they happen to not sell out there, which they typically do, we do release what's left to the public, but they get first dibs. They also get first dibs on tickets to events, traveling with us, stuff like that, after the episode exclusives and more. 
discounts on this merch too. De depending on the tier that they're registered at, yeah, Thank additional you. discounts. Uh -huh. All right, normally we take a break, but we haven't gotten to the rice. We're just gonna roll right Let's into roll it in. right after this. On to the rye, it is our barrel proof, and it's rye, that's why we saved it for last. It is 63% rye, 24% corn, and that same 13% malted barley, but it is just 123.2 proof of barrel proof. A barrel proof rye? Yeah, yeah. I don't always feel that ryes need to be super high proof, so I'm interested mm -hmm. to see, you know, something with 63% rye also being barrel proof. How does that come across? Is it too spicy? Is it too minty? Well, or from, is it just right? Is it Goldilocks? <laughs> you know, I don't know. From the nose, I'm not getting too much of that rye eucalyptus. You do get some effervescence, like, almost feel like I can breathe a little deeper, a little easier, you know? Mm -hmm, for sure, but it's not in your face. It's not no. like you're walking through a, you know, a forest full of pine trees. It has a little bit of outdoorsy, herbal, minty, floral, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. earthy mm -hmm. notes, but it's not, yeah, it's not knocking you over the head, right? Yeah, I would say, if anything, it's more mint, yeah. It is a little bit of mint. It smells like fresh mint Ooh. in the garden. In the garden. All right, well, for the third time. To your health, because we can't say it enough. Whoa. Okay, it is more, Whoa. Effer it is more effervescent on the palate. Uh, it is not. Big, big rye. <laughs> big, big rye. It, it is not just what we got on the nose on the palate. It's much more um, effervescence mm. and eucalyptus and... Flo it's got floral notes in there yeah, too. Yeah, floral for sure. I think it leans more, I mean, there is mintiness too, but I think it leans more floral than like pine and evergreen. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Maybe a little dill. Perhaps, yeah. yeah. Dill uh, just some there. herbal notes. Mm -hmm. Garden, again, I feel like garden mint. Um, mm. Tobacco, especially towards the finish. That rye spice and tobacco really comes in like that herbalness mintiness dies down and, and right. then comes the spice. Right. I need another sip. I mean, I, I will. It's still, the, the finish is still going it's though. It's still going. It's still going. It's very campfire warm in mm -hmm. my chest. But yeah, second sip. The texture's really nice at wow. the front of the palate. It does get dry. I think the oak and those like baking spice notes kind of, it's a little tannic. It's not a killer for me. It's not a killer. Yeah. But see, we're different. For when I say dry, I don't mean it as a bad thing. <laughs> It's just a description of what's happening. <laughs> yeah. When Chad says it's dry, that's an insult. <laughs> well, dry can be a killer for me. Mm -hmm. um, and this is this is not near that. Second sip, more acclimated to it. You know, you see through a lot of that very forward and upfront spice. And this spice, I feel like it's not really that cinnamon red hots that we got on the bourbon. Yeah. It is more mint, eucalyptus, fruity. But there is some dry spice in there too. Yeah, there is some dry spice. You're, you're getting that on the finish. Maybe this one is rolling more into the cinnamon than the black pepper that the bourbon did. So it definitely yeah. on the finish, it has dry cinnamon. Whereas like the, the rye bourbon was cinnamon red hots or like big mm -hmm. red gum kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh, this is more like dry cinnamon, just tasting that. Yeah. Now don't do the cinnamon challenge or anything. I don't want to see any, anybody get hurt. I think like for me, because it is June at the time of this filming. It's very hot outside. This is too hot for me, both in terms of the proof too hot and, hot and the um, the rye content, the way it's reading in the glass. 63% rye is not normally too high for me. I'm not saying it's too high in general, but for June when it's 90 degrees outside, this is a little spicy for me. I would save mm -hmm. this personally. I would like to revisit this in the fall. Mm. I think this would really hit uh, its note with me then. Yeah. Today, I am loving. Yeah. I mean, if we'll just go right into what we prefer. I am loving that weeded bourbon. That's the star for me. Same. But yeah, I would have to probably give it to the rye. I mean, we can bring all three of them. You want to give it to the rye? Or, sorry, the weeded bourbon. Um, so we last had the, the rye on our palate. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the, the rye bourbon again. I think that's fair. Let's compare to those two. see how that goes. You've got yours in a different order. I'll put mine in the same order. Well, after having the rye, <laughs> the rye bourbon comes across a it's lot sweeter. Easy. Yeah. It's very, it's a much easier both I mean, in terms of going down to that wow. 107 in proof mm -hmm. and switching to the corn dominant yes. mash bill. But it does. It does wow. still contain it, some it of that spice. It does show how different of a spice it contains. The cinnamon red hot went right back onto uh, 
my tongue. Yeah, it's more of like cinnamon candy than uh, than yeah. dry cinnamon spice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that's the cool thing. People will be like, how can you even tell the difference? How do you think that? First of all, it's subjective. So or where, whether we're right or wrong. There's no wrong answers in whiskey. There's no wrong answer or right answer. It's all just speculation. And you could get something totally different. But people are like, how do you differentiate those two? And it's just like, we've been doing this for eight years next month. Being mindful of what does the different experience of tasting dried cinnamon versus eating a cinnamon red hot? Right. How is that different to yes. you? Now let's go to the Darling, the Weeded the Bourbon. Darling. It has my favorite nose. Yeah, that is that is a great nose. Although I do think the rye nose is the most complex. It's the most layered, but I, this is the most pleasant. Mouthfeel, mouthfeel, mm. mouthfeel. Mm. Mouth yeah, 121 proof, but just drinking so Still differently than the gentle. 107 and the 123.2. Yeah. Like, those are the outliers and, and, and the, the weeded bourbon. And you know, it makes sense because that's why some people say they like weeded bourbons. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a little easier, a little more gentle, or they'll say it's smooth. Uh, <laughs> I guess you would say, yeah, if we were talking about the difference between these three, I think that the general public would say, well, B is the smoothest. B, I'm sorry, I'm looking at B. The second one we tried, the, <laughs> the, weeded, the weeded bourbon, bourbon which is not what's in front of us, so we'll just turn this around for mm -hmm. you, <laughs> is the smoothest. That's, a, I think, what people would say because it lacks that level of spice that the other two with the rye and that the mash punch, will have. yeah. I get that. Yeah, I just think that balance of that, like, sweet, syrupy molasses that we talked about with those oak notes, that those wood notes, it's just, it's singing for me. And mm -hmm. the mouthfeel, I like it. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Um, this would be the one that I would choose if I had to choose one of the three. But I like all three. I'm very uh, yeah. pleased with all of them. Same. And I guess since we're going back, we can go back to the ride and do it one more time. I mean, Ooh. different. Totally three, different. Three different bottles, three different tastes. Completely different. Yeah. A really cool exploration, though. So at the time of this filming, um, we don't have the price info on this. They are 700 milliliter bottles because there is plans in the future for these to go overseas mm -hmm. where they have to be 700 mm -hmm. milliliters. They're not um, just cheating you out of 50 milliliters. <laughs> they have to yeah. be 700 in order to be distributed internationally. Yeah. So we don't know the current distribution or the price. So we can't really- We're full of helpful info. <laughs> do a recommend or not. Now, when this comes out, hopefully we will have ascertained that information mm -hmm. and it'll be, it, hopefully it's already been in the episode. But would you say you'd keep an eye out for them? Oh, absolutely. Now, One, price it, dependent. Yeah, price dependent. One, it's, it's unusual or it's not every day that a big distillery like Heaven Hill, which is the second largest selling bourbon distillery, you know, behind Jim Beam. Largest family owned. Largest family owned, that is correct. Uh, that they come out with three new mash bills. Right, that, that all focus <laughs> on like, you know, farms that are- Local and yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and make that kind of commitment. Um, it's an interesting project and I think one worth trying. And I think what would be really fun was if you could get a couple friends to go in on all three of these and then compare these three mash bills to three other mash bills from Heaven Hill. Like you could do a Pikesville rye yeah. or something else that, that, you know, would be closer to the rye. Same Heaven thing Hill with the, and the bourbon uh, and the weeded bourbon. Yeah. And just kind of do an exploration, have a bourbon night. That's yeah. what I would do. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I might do. Who knows? Yeah. Super cool for Heaven Hill to put out three new mash bills. Uh, and I will say in conclusion, these don't taste like the typical Heaven Hill profile that Agreed. we are used to tasting. That's correct. And that's obvious because the mash bill is so different, so different. Than, their, than their typical, so. Based on our descriptions, tell us in the comments below which one do you think you would like best or mm -hmm. which one would you keep an eye out for? What's, yeah. what's number one on your list? There we go, okay. Well, that's where you better leave it. If you haven't subscribed us already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There's suggestions of other videos down here. Hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Thank you, Heaven Hill. Until next time, drink more bourbon.